Rachel Barbo here with Sunday Soul. I am thrilled, like so excited, y'all. Season four, season four. Anytime you get past season one in anything, I think it's pretty awesome. But um, season four, we made we we made it out of twenty twenty. We're into twenty twenty one in season four, and I could think of nobody better than this gentleman, Rob Kenny, to join us for the kickoff episode of season four. Rob, how are you, my friend? I'm very well, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me on. That's, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been quite, quite a year on so many levels for all of us, you know. Yes, it has. And um, for those that, um, that may not just recognize his name, he's become a household name. His slogan has become a household name. His YouTube, the last I checked, Rob, 3.3 million subscribers. I'm like, you hit a chord with people across the globe. The, the, the impetus, the guy, the founder, the guy, the dad uh, behind Dad, How Do I? And I love the story of why you created this. And I could butcher it and or try to do my best telling it. But I would love if you would share with us the reason, your heart reason, your heart space um, here at this soulful conversation for why you started your own movement. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it was kind of the perfect storm, really, um, because of the pandemic. Um, you know, I finally had some time on my hands to do this. It's something I've wanted to do for several years. And I kept telling my daughter, you know, I, I thought it would be something that uh, you know, would be, would have been useful for me when I was younger. Uh, obviously I'm ancient, so YouTube wasn't around <laughs> at the time, but, uh, so I was trying to create something where people could feel loved, come in, learn how to do something. And I don't waste your time try not to, you know, try to make it where it's, um, you know, uh, it's worth your time to come in and learn something. And I don't want to leave things out. And so I try to, you know, I try to package it fairly well. But so my uh, I'm one of eight kids and my um, my dad, when I was 14, it, actually, when I was 13, he came home and said he, he was done raising kids. Mm. Um, so I went to live with my older brother, who was 23 at the time, him mm -hmm. and it's um, and they were he was newlywed. Um, he was 23 and his wife was 24. And, you know, at that time, it seemed old. <laughs> My son's 20, almost 26. And I can't imagine him having a, a 14 year old um, come live with him. But but they stepped up for me. Um, they were married in October. And then when I, so this was when I was 14 in October, they were married. And then in January, I moved in with them in their, uh, they, they had an eight by 35 trailer. Um, so they didn't exactly have room to squeeze in a 14 year old boy, but they, you know, they made it happen. And my brother built a shelf and put it on the back of the trailer uh, near the back and just put up a shelf and put up a bed. And that was my bedroom mm -hmm. um, for a couple of years. Uh, so, you know, at that time in my young mind, uh, I determined, you know, that's not something I ever want to do. You know, uh, I want to make sure that, um, if given the chance, given the opportunity that I'll, I want to raise good adults and I want to fight through the temptations to, you know, run after shiny objects. I've talked about that on my channel too, because it means something to me, you know, to try to get mm -hmm. people to think long-term about their decisions, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I've tried to make my channel more than just how to tie a tie. <laughs> I've tried to how, you know, walk alongside people and try to encourage them. Um, you know, I'm a man of faith myself. And so it's, I end my videos by saying, God bless you to try to, you know, share a little bit in my finite uh, ability to, you know, share God's love. Um, and I think that has also resonated with people, especially in the world today, you know, we need, we need to be kind and we need to be loving. And it's so rare. I think that people are like, wait, wait this guy's not yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah. he, he seems to care about me. And I'm glad that that's coming through. You know, okay. So I totally get this because I had one of these experiences. My middle name's Joy. And people often ask me with what I do, Rob, they're like, oh, is that a stage name? I'm like, no, no, my mom and my uncle named me Joy. Um, and I was a love child. I say that with all love and and uh, God God planned me. Um, but hold on one second. Hold on. Ollie. Mm -hmm. Ollie. Right. right. <laughs> I got my dogs too. But I was able to get them outside. So hopefully we'll dogs, see. Dogs, dogs. All right, Emma, <laughs> if you want to just get that timestamp. 
right there and I'll, I'll begin again right there. All right, in three, two, one. People often ask me, Rob, they say, you know, is Joy like a stage name? And I'm like, no, no, you know, my mom and my uncle named me that. And, um, and you know, as a love child, God planned me. Maybe my mom didn't and, and a biological dad, but, but God planned me. And so, you know, you talk about kindness. The other day, um, I was on the road, like four states, three states, four cities in a week. And I was coming home and I saw a gentleman, Rob, who was visually impaired. And, um, and I, I, I ended up meeting him. His name was Josh. He was 22. It was his birthday. He pet my dog. It was great. And I said, Hey, Josh, you know, when you, when you get ready to go on the plane, would you allow me to walk you down? And at first he was a little dogs. At first he was a little, uh, he was a little, um, there was a little barrier there, but I broke through it because I'm respectfully relentless and I just love on people like yourself. And so he allowed me to walk him down. And even before we got on the plane, I said, Hey, would you, you know, I just thought about what would I like, you know, before I get on the plane, I'd like to use the bathroom. I'd maybe like something to drink. And he was like protesting, like, you don't have to buy me anything to drink. I said, Josh, it's your birthday. You know, like, let me buy you something to drink. But the funniest thing, what resonated with what you said was the lady at the, the gate, I told her that I was going to do that. And she said, you would do that? And I said, yes, ma'am. Th- like, I like you, I want to bring kindness back in a way that we just normalize it, like to be extravagantly kind to people. And I'm curious where that, ma- talk to me and talk to our audience about the maturation process of going from teaching somebody to tie a tie, which is valuable, to feel good, you know, you dress good, you look good, you feel good. Talk about that maturation process in, in teaching somebody to do a, a skill, a something to actually encouraging them, being like a dad, really filling a void and a role for them. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's interesting because when I was talking about this channel with my daughter, um, I said, you know, there's so much more uh, to being a dad than running around fixing things or tying a tie or what have you, you know, they're valuable skills. But um, I, I said, I really would hope that I, I get the opportunity to share my heart and talk about you know, I've talked about integrity. I've talked about uh, attitude. I've talked about, I just recently talked about money Um, Mm -hmm. and just kind of having a perspective on things. You know, I think it's, uh, I'm so grateful that I was given that opportunity because I didn't want people to feel like, oh, it's dad, how do I? And now he's preaching at me, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to learn how to, you know, check the oil and next thing you know, you know, but it kind of happened. Um, it, it was a God thing, you know, um, when my channel went viral, I, you know, I, I, I've said this over and over again, and I'll repeat it till the day I die. <laughs> I thought I was going to help 30 or 40 people. I honestly thought I was just going to try to make this unique place where people could come in and learn how to do things. And it's kind of a legacy that I'd be able to leave for some people. And if you help one person, that, that's good. You know, I'm good with it. Um, but when my channel went viral, um, you know, my wife and I planned well, I wasn't planning on switching careers. I wasn't starting a YouTube channel to, to get famous or any of the above. I was just thinking, you know, this will be a helpful tool. And so when everything went viral, it scared me. I, I honestly was, um, I saw my face everywhere, (laughs) you know, that was terrible. (laughs) I'm I'm an introvert, you know, for for the most part, I've had to kind of grow through that a little bit in this process. Um, But yeah, it, um, it scared me, but I, I had kind of made, you know, I've tried to keep my word. That's one of the things I try to also help people understand. If you say you're going to do something, you should do it. And I, I made a commitment on my channel that I was going to put up two videos a week at the time. Wow. I just didn't have the bandwidth. I was having requests for sponsorships, requests for interviews. I had all this stuff going on. I'm like, what am I, you know, I'm still working. (laughs) So I'm still, and I'm still working to this day. And so, you know, um, it was just too much. And so I went on my channel and just, you know, shared my heart a little bit. Um, and that people actually responded more to that than, (laughs) than they did to some other things. I talked, you know, I read the, the man in the arena, um, the Teddy Roosevelt quote and tried to encourage people to not let the critic stop them from stepping out because what is the critic at the end of the day? You know, if, if you based your life on trying to make sure everybody thinks what you're doing is amazing, uh, you're never going to go anywhere, (laughs) you know? Um, and I see that on my channel still, I get people still, I mean, you can say, you can, you know, hand out hundred dollar bills and people would still find fault. Oh, it wasn't a thousand or whatever, you know, it's like, 
you know, there's just no pleasing some people. And so anyway, I thought, so I, by, I'm thankful that I was able to share my heart. And then I felt like that kind of opened the door to now I can talk about other things <laughs> rather than just stick to, yeah, just stick to the how to's, you know, that's all we want. And yeah, I think it's, it's gone over pretty well. I'm really thankful for it. Cause I, I love that my channel is more that more, more than just showing people how to do things. Okay. So just a feather in your cap for later. If you ever want to be a speaker speaker, like if you ever want to go in front of people and go and speak to college students or anywhere, let me know because you are so in line with what we do and I'm changing the narrative. Like it's so cool. It's so neat. We're so inspired. We teach people. I teach this, this principle and I call it, what's your FOD? And and FOD stands for your field of dreams. If you build it, they will come, right? Mm -hmm. And you built it and they came, Rob. You built it and they came and the detractors were there and they're always going to be there and they're going to tell you to put the corn back and play it safe and don't do it and shut up and you're stupid. And the little girl says, no, daddy, they'll come. They'll come from miles around. And mm -hmm. we all have it in us. We all have something. Your FOD may be your child. It may be something you're supposed to create. It may be a nonprofit. It may be a passion project. It may be building wells in Africa. I don't know what, you know, each person's thing is. It could be anything. It could be something you're supposed to make money off of, something maybe you're not. But I love it that you did it. And I, I want to speak, if you would speak, to the dreamers that are watching this right now, right? And are saying, he did it. He created a channel. He went viral. Like, what was that like? And what have you learned? Did you, did you go live? Did you like walk us through a little bit of that, that process, if you will, of, of the creation of this and going viral? And, and, and I know that there are people out there that are watching this that are saying, I want his tactical tips on and practical <laughs> tips on, on how he did this. Well, a couple of things come to my mind um, um, based on, on what you just said. And I, I have to go back to I'm an introvert. I, I and I think I, you know, might have been because, you know, I'm one of eight. And so when I was a kid, our, our family was pretty dysfunctional before it finally fell apart. And so, you know, since I was number seven, I always felt like I my older siblings didn't really listen to what I had to say, you know, um, and not their own fault. They were kids themselves, you know, and, yeah. but I would get kind of talked down and talked over. So I just kind of took on that role and that was me. And so I kind of into my adult life, avoided speaking, avoided um, putting myself out there. Um, and, but then when I've been given the opportunity and I, ha I had to wrestle with God on this, uh, I said, God, I know you don't want me to, to do this. So if you put opportunities in my way, I'll do it. Um, even if I fall down and trip and make a fool of myself, um, this is not something that you, I don't think you want for me. Um, and so God has a sense of humor. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, that's kind of, so I, I actually, I talk about this in my book. I have a book coming out on, yep. uh, yeah, so it'll be out by the time this airs. Um, but I, um, I talk about the struggles that I had of getting up and talking. And I, now I even have a how to give a speech. <laughs> and again, it's God's sense of humor of using, you know, my, what I thought was a weakness. Um, uh, and it, you know, I ended up giving a speech for my work that I always avoided. And I had an, I had an opportunity to avoid this one too. And I thought, you know, you don't want me to do this. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I had sweaty palms. I had, uh, you know, it was, on, it was at the end of a two day conference and I, freaked out I'd, you know i'd be doing something one and i'm like oh that's right i got that speech and oh why did i say yes you know and i i had my way out but so then the next day when i gave it um boy people came up to me and just said rob you know what how come you've been keeping this from us you know you <laughs> had something that we all could and it was my peers you know i was trying to share because i actually ended up being the the top salesman that year um which is like, you know, I'm, in, I'm in sales as a as an introvert, you know, so it's, it's fairly uh, ironic, but anyway, yeah. So I share that, in, that story in the, in the, um, in the book, but one thing that I've told my son to, you know, and you think about this with, um, you know, some people that maybe are a little shy like, and I compare it to if you're on a basketball court mm -hmm. and you can shoot the lights out of, you know, you, but you're a little nervous or whatever. And it's like the guy passes it to you, you're open, you're nervous. So you pass it back. It's like, yeah. well, you know, 
you got to take the shots that we, that's why we have you out here. You're our shooter, you know, take yeah. them. You no, know, you don't let that stop you because we believe in you go do it, you know? And so I think that's a great analogy of, boy, if you feel called to do something, you know, do it. don't let, you know, critics stop you. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to encourage bad behavior by any yeah. means, but if you are yeah. calling where you're called, you feel called to do something, and you know don't let your nerves stop you because even if you're nervous people still will respond if if it's something you feel called to do did you begin just recording videos and going on youtube was it live did you how did that how did that happen and how did you go viral so to speak yeah yeah so i uh no i i <laughs> my again you know this whole thing is that it's a comedy of errors but i uh <laughs> <laughs> I uploaded my, so my channel started on April Fool's Day. April 1st is the, the day that I started the channel. And then April 2nd was my first upload. Um, and I just uploaded it to YouTube and it was how to tie a tie. And then I did how to shave the next one. Um, and then, so, so my daughter shared it in a few kindness groups is what happened. Okay. She, in a few kindness groups with Facebook and there was a group called Scrubbing In and they're called The Scrubbers and they, they there's a Scrubbing In podcast and they responded so great to it. They said, oh, this is the positivity we need in the world. And so they kind of promoted it and then Facebook got a hold of it. TikTok got a hold of it. Uh, certain you know on uh, people with a lot of followers and promoted it and yeah that's when it went viral so it went viral around right around this time a little bit you know may 18th may 19th of last year you know one of the things i want to i want to brag on you um uh even more um so i just went i, I it just was a speaker at a women's conference and um and and it came about because two years ago a young woman at a college sent me an email and she had heard my podcast and she said to her people at this college, it's a small college, um, SMSU in Marshall, Minnesota. And she said to her people, um, I, you know, I'd love to have her come speak. She probably won't answer, you know, whatever. And, um, and she said, I did answer. And we, we had a conversation and, and I ended up going to speak and I've been there multiple times. My point is she was blown away by the fact that I answered. And, and I, I, would, I had this out of body moment recently that I'm speaking at this women's conference because this young woman was ballsy enough. She shot, it took her shot to, to send me an email and I answered. Why am I telling you this? Because you did the same thing. I took my shot and sent you an email and said, look, I have this really neat show. It goes on the internet. A lot of people learn a lot of things. It makes people feel good. It makes people feel, it makes people grow. Would you like to be? And you immediately, boom, you answered. And so I just want to praise you for that one and say um, how grateful I am for you because I operate in the same vein. You know, people are people. Rob, I was a sportscaster for 17 years. And Emma and I have often talked about this, my lead creative. You know, I don't hear or worship anybody because Everybody puts their pants on the same way, one leg at a time, right? People are people. And so when you take time to be a normal human being and a, and a kind human being as you are and answer emails or say, you know what, I'll grace your podcast or I'll do this or I'll, you take that opportunity, man, you never know who you're blessing and you never know what opportunities are going to come out of it. So I just want to say thank you. Oh, well, thank you. That, that was very kind. You know, I try, I try not to think more highly of myself than I ought. And I feel like God has given me this platform. So however, I, you know, I'm just trying to hold it with an open hand and let him use whatever. Yeah, so I, I do. So I am trying because that, that actually came up with my book publisher. Are, are there any interviews that you don't want to do? And I said, honestly, I think we need to be able to talk. I think we all, you know, that we've, that there's been a a time in our history right now that's not good where people are shouted down or whatever um call it what you will canceled whatever i i think is that's just not good it's not healthy mm -hmm. you need to hear the other side you, you know we don't need to yell at each other but we yep. should be able to talk that's what debates are for in a calm manner where you're not putting the other person down but if you don't ever hear the other side how do you know that maybe that's not what you believe <laughs> you know yes. you ever, if you're only hearing one side then yeah so I just I, I honestly am I'm trying to do as many as I can some I'm like I, I just don't have the bandwidth you know um and so I'm trying I I am having to 
let some pass by <laughs> just because I just don't have the time. I, I Like I said, I'm still working full time because I'll be 57 this month and I didn't plan on switching careers. You know, my wife and I are, aren't quite retired. Uh, I don't want to leave my job because I don't want to pull up short. And so all of the above, I'm spinning many plates right now. Well, I'll be I'll say a prayer for you because I'm a woman of faith, too. And I'll say a prayer that God gives you the bandwidth. And we're going to talk about self-care in a moment. But I cannot let the opportunity pass by to let you promote this amazing book that has just come out. Um, it is Father's Day today. Um, when this episode will air. And um, so it means so much to so many people. First off, I want to talk about the book. Um, where can they buy it? Why did you write it? What it's, what's it about? And, and why should everybody in the world grab a copy of this amazing book? <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope they do. Honestly, um, I put a lot of effort into it. I had to, you know, rearrange my schedule to make sure that I had the time and I hired a ghost writer so that I could, you know, that writing's not necessarily my thing. And he did a great job putting together the stories. Um, and so it's a DIY book, but it's more than a DIY book. The first half um, is about my siblings. Um, when I mm. turned 50, I, uh, I went around because we had to rely on each other when our family fell apart. And so I had the benefit of being, you know, on the younger end. And I, I went around to each of my siblings and said one character trait that I really love about you. And I start with my sister, Mary, and I talk about the importance of family. And then I talk, and then my brother, Tim talking about, you know, having a backbone and um, standing up for yourself. Uh, and I just work my way down my siblings. Um, and then I tie it in with, you know, some dad jokes and then some, uh, you know, some of my story of forgiving my dad, um, mm. which wasn't easy. You know, I forgave him before he passed, um, but it was the right thing to do. And, um, you know, I have an audio version too. I got to record that. They asked me if I wanted to do it. And I was like, I have to, I, I can't imagine somebody else reading my story. You know, <laughs> really, no, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I, <laughs> I'll get in the studio and record it. And um, I broke down and cried a couple times. I had to, you know, it, and, which was awkward. You know, I'm in these in front of these people. I don't know. I just met them and I'm, I'm feeling a little nervous, you know, out of my element in this studio. And as I'm reading the words of uh, forgiving my dad, I, I broke down and cried and said, I, I, I need 10 minutes. Can you just, you know, give me a give me a second. They were gracious. They were awesome. You know, it was all in my head that they're looking at me like I'm weird. Yeah. Uh, and then when my my brother Don, when I tell the story of him and how generous he was when I was younger, he's just a couple years older than me and how he went out of his way to uh, be generous towards me. Um, I broke down and cried again. Uh, so that's kind of the first part. That's the first part of the book. And then I do have some DIYs that I think Honestly, I think there's some pretty good nuggets in there. There's um, there's 50 of them. And I kind of talk about a lot of different things. Financially is, is one uh, with quite a few different um, or things within that category. And then I talk about how to build a fence. And I talk about so a lot of different things. I'm trying to cover a lot. Uh, and then I actually have eight um, bonus ones because I've always felt like it's good to under promise and over perform. Yes. Plus it covers me in case in those 50, somebody says that was a lame one, dad, you know, <laughs> hey, well, you got eight more. There you go. Fill them in. Uh, and I was, and one of them actually is uh, how to read the Bible. Um, because I think that was helpful for me when I was a kid. I didn't, you know, where do you even begin or how, what is, what is the, how is the Bible made up? And a lot of people read Genesis, Exodus, and then you stop because <laughs> yeah. Leviticus <laughs> numbers Deuteronomy you know you get bogged down in there um and so I even say you know you have my permission to skip those three books and move to Joshua so then you yes. continue on with the history uh yeah and just try to try to break it down so that it's not so intimidating and to try to encourage people to just read it for themselves I just that's just my challenge I'm not you know I you, you have to at the end of the day live with your decision on what you do with the information but if it's something you know it's the most well-read book of you know of all time you should probably at least look at it you know um and then make your make your choice from there but anyway yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with the book I really um I really do feel feel good about it we, it's going to be in Target um and it'll be on Amazon and it'll be um uh, yeah in, in Barnes and Noble we do have signed copies available um, through Queen Anne Books, um, which is a local independent up here in the Seattle area that I think it's important to try to 
try to support yes. independence. So yes. Okay, so we'll provide a link to the book. Um, yep. in the show notes and you got to go grab it. I'm going to have to get a signed copy and I'm a huge proponent of small business entrepreneur myself. My mom had a small business, love a bookstore. One of the greatest things I can do for self-care and I really want them to come back now as we get more towards the end of the pandemic is going to sit in a, in a bookstore for the day, getting a cup of coffee and just picking up a stack of books and reading them and going, okay, you know, I've read 10 or 15 pages of this one. I'm going to take this one home. I want this one. I love spending the day in, in a bookstore. And so mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to say that your, your story brought up is I, um, I had a girlfriend who, um, who did not look, know the Lord. And she was into some really, really worldly um, stuff, some stuff that was, you know, that was frankly a little bit scary, um, the stuff that she was into. And and um, Rob, I prayed for her and my other friend, we prayed for her for 10 years. Mm -hmm. We never stopped praying for her. And this um, spring, early this spring, I got and I got a message and um, she said, um, you're never going to believe this, but I got saved. Uh -huh. And I was like, what? Like what? And what I loved about what you said was about the permission to skip the Bible and understand it was. I got to walk her through and it's been the honor of my life and getting to walk her through being a baby Christian and a baby new understanding of Jesus and what is tithing and the Bible and getting her a study Bible and all of these different things. And it's been such a beautiful, you know, I say this all the time with, with my movement, with I'm changing the narrative is where we get in trouble. And I think this really applies to you where we get in trouble is we assume people should know things. We assume people should know how to do relationships well. We assume people should know right from right and wrong from wrong. We assume people should know better. And in reality, we don't know what somebody saw growing up. We don't know if somebody's dad left, mom left, mom hit dad, dad hit mom, drugs involved, raised by granny. You know, we just don't know. And so it's, it's um, really a beautiful thing in my life. And I know it is in your life is getting to teach people filling a role, beginning to teach people things that we assume they should know how to do and they don't. And, and so I, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm not going to assume, let me go back to that. I would think that that brings you so much joy because it brings me so much joy. I feel like when somebody says you changed my life or you enriched my life, um, my lead creative and I recently had a conversation. I told her, I said, that fills my cup. She told me something that happened in, in reaction to, to something I taught her. And to me, it feels like, Rob, getting a million dollar deposit into my bank account. How does that feel for you when you know you've affected somebody's life positively? Oh, my goodness. I, you know, some of the comments on my channel, if you've, if you've spent any time on my channel, um, look, reading some of the comments, um, it's, it's humbling. It's, you know, the, the, how it's touched some people uh is beyond me but again it's the god thing i really feel it's um god hit because i've had people come on and say what's this i she, um one gal said i've never felt anything like this i've got this pain in my chest watching you be be loving towards me and i i my mind can't get around it and um yeah i i think that's the holy spirit you know, um, reaching out and touching people, um, as long as I continue to, you know, represent him well, that's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, going back to, you know, being able to share the good news, you know, it, it's good, good news. Wait a second. I've got good news for you. Come back. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, I, I, unfortunately, you know, um, in our world, uh, people have an idea of what a Christian, maybe they were hurt by a Christian or what have you. Um, but man, the gospel means good news. I, yes. I, I love, there's a song by Mercy Me that, um, says, uh, you know, it's not good news. It's the best news ever. You know, I know where I'm going, <laughs> not because Rob is anything, you know, it's because Jesus is, Jesus took care of that for me. And I can know that I have eternal life. That's what the Bible says. You know, I'm, I'm counting on, uh, his goodness, not mine. I, you know, I fall way short, but <laughs> That's the price he paid for me. And that's the best news ever. You know, it changes, yes. how, changes how you live your life, man. I know, you know, because we're all going to die. It, you, we can kid ourselves into thinking that, you know, you're not, you're going to be the one, <laughs> you know, so we really need to figure it out. And I, I, I've tried to share this on, on some, some other podcasts too, that, you know, I think the most 
compassionate thing we could do is compare notes as human beings we should compare yeah. notes so we can go okay well what what seems the most reasonable and you know and the bible does say come now let us reason together you know mm. um, i think we just we get so busy in our time that it's you know we don't slow down and think about the things that really matter when you know we're busy buying toys and running after this and running after that and man your, your life's passing by you're getting older and i used to i used to teach sunday school and i would tell the kids i said learn this stuff as soon as you can so that you don't live your whole life and then go man i probably would have done it a little differently <laughs> you know let's get the instruction book ahead of the time as you're you know to help navigate your life for you i love it so we always end our episodes with um Two questions. And the first one is, Rob, what is something that you're focused on, you have your intentions on this week that possibly our viewers, our listeners can take away and apply in their own life? Uh, this particular week, I guess, is <laughs> a little bit tough to narrow it down. A big thing that I've been trying to promote um, is for people to think long term about their decisions. And I just can't get that out of my head. I think it's because of my own uh, situation, you know, from being a, a, a kid and I've talked about it on my channel. I just, I, I don't know if that's God wanting me to share that or what is just, boy, sure. You know, take, take the time to slow down and think long-term about, you know, cause if you run and I've talked about this on my channel too, running after shiny objects, men tend, you know, are visually stimulated. So you run after shiny objects and you can figure out whatever that might mean in your, in, in, in everybody's case, but you know, slow it down and think long term about um, your decisions so that if you do that, and uh, meanwhile, somebody else is having to clean up your mess that you left behind. It doesn't just go, it, you know, that you can't just leave and then, oh, everything's going to be fine. Well, you know, there's there's stuff. And in my case, my brother and his wife had to clean up the mess that my, my that my dad left behind. And so yeah. that's kind of been on my heart a lot the past <laughs> past year and so if any if I can encourage people to think long term and then if you're going through something boy you know uh you and I know you know we're similar in age you you, mm -hmm. you know you I'm assuming maybe I'm way older than you so uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh you know there's times where you're going through stuff and you're like ah boy and then boy and then you look you know and then two years later you're oh that's right I remember I was really struggling with that thing at the time so time just keeps marching on and you might go, be going through something amazing, but you know, things are temporary. This life is, is temporary. And so if you're going through a struggle that, you know, at some point it's going to end, you know. Amen. And lastly, we are huge on self-care in the movement. Um, huge proponents of it. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't be good for anybody else. What are some ways that you, um, you enact, you act out, you, go through self-care in your own life? What do you do to take care of you? Yeah, thank you. I I, I love that. And because I've had to figure that out because my life has been turned upside down the past year and I had to kind of create some boundaries. Um, and so I actually um, kind of narrowed it down to four things. I, um, I got to be true to myself. I think okay. it's important to be true to myself so that I don't compromise to try to please others. I got to be true to myself. At the end of the day, I got to live with me. I, you know, <laughs> I don't have to, you know, answer for anybody else, but I also got to live with myself. I think don't get ahead of myself, you know, so don't start mm -hmm. future tripping and thinking about, you know, what, you know, what's going to happen next, especially when stuff is out of my control. Um, and then I, I got to be kind to myself. This is the boundary I had to set as far as getting up in the morning. I don't immediately reach for my phone anymore. I, I just can't. I can't and read the comments or what have you. I just spend some time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I get my cup of coffee and I just sit there <laughs> and breathe in and breathe out and just enjoy the Lord rather than, you know, uh, I'll spend some time with you later, Lord. And then also I'm trying to enjoy the ride. You know, I'm trying to enjoy mm -hmm. it live in the moment and, you know, do, yeah, because you never know. Again, things are temporary. This could all, you know, if God has other plans, then who knows what the future, future holds. Well, you have blessed us today. And I know this is going to bless so many people. Again, go grab his book. We will put the link in the show notes. And Rob, I don't think this is the end of our story. I think our paths cross again. I don't know how that happens. Uh, but I'm so excited and so honored that you would kick off season four, the first episode on Father's Day, because 
so many people are missing their dad in some way or another, never had him in their life. And you fill that role for a lot of people in a lot of different ways with practicality, with inspiration, with motivation, with fate. And we're just so honored that you would join us today. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. You're very kind. Uh, you actually can remind me of my older sister, who is very, <laughs> uh, yeah, very positive and encouraging and uplifting. I, I very much appreciate that, that, you know, we need more of that in this world. So thank you so much. I've enjoyed our, I've enjoyed our time today. Absolutely. We'll see you soon.